vais vous parler des crises anciennes, essentiellement de l'ordre des crises et de la façon dont elles sont enregistrées dans le livre fossile. Sur cette diapositive, vous avez deux images. Sur la gauche, vous avez des images de fossiles ammonites, magnifiques spécimens. Sur la gauche, vous avez un fossile bench avec rien. Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire Qu'est-ce que ça signifie Qu'est-ce que ça signifie Crises Non crises Contrairement à ce qu'on pourrait penser, la crise n'est pas The crisis is not on the left hand side, it's on the right hand side. The crisis doesn't mean it's a hecatomb, it doesn't mean it's huge mortality. A crisis is a decrease in reproductive success in some species, and the species simply fade away for lack of individuals. So, a crisis is a fossil layer with no fossils. How do we exit a crisis once the crisis is over? How have the groups bounced back? How was this recorded? Ammonites at the limit between Permian and Trias, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, or Primary, Secondary era, just to keep it simple. In the ammonites, we see the survival of only two or three species after the crisis, and only one species during the following crisis. Healing takes a long time, 10 million years. Or this is what was, current, was thought until recently, but a very nice study was conducted, 77 areas sampled, 25 time intervals, more than 10,000 specimens collected, and it was found that life bounced back much faster than was originally thought after the crisis. Life bounces back one million years after the crisis. We have layers such as this one with 30 different genera showing that uh, Biosphere, the ammonites uh, have uh, healed and the crisis is over. In one million years, well, it's much shorter than we thought. Obviously, it's a very long time, but it's shorter than we thought. And if we look at the current crisis, which is possibly a major crisis, our societies will not be patient enough to wait for a million crises, a million years after the crisis to see the biosphere bounce back and bloom again. Another example, urchins during the Permatrias crisis, showing that uh, adaptation is very difficult. During the Permian era, there were many urchins, and then they were almost eradicated during the crisis, and only one genera and only two or three species uh, survived. And the first crisis radiation uh, was uh, very long. 23 million years after 10 species, and 50 million years later, 80 species. Now, the survival of the urchin, was it, um, did it happen by chance or not? Urchins from the primary area have many interambulacral plates. This is what you see on the left. Very many plate columns, and the survival urchins are the ones with only two interambulacral plate columns, whereas the others have many more columns. Does it mean that the uh, urchin with only two columns of interambulacral plates survived uh, because of that? What would have happened uh, without the crisis? Would the urchins have had many more plates? We don't know the answer to that question. What it boils down to is that crises can hit hard. Their intensity depends on the way they affect morphologies. Healing can be quick, although one million years is a very long time. That life bounces back after the crisis more intensely when the crisis was very hard, and we don't understand why some species survived where others became extinct.